What's up everybody, welcome back inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center for a practice report presented by Byers Auto. That's the 40 year vet Tim May, that's Andy Backstrom, I'm Spencer Holbrook. Fellas, we don't have to give any introductions to this, it's rivalry week, it's the week of the game, Tim. Uh, initial takeaways as we talk to Ryan Day, Jim Knowles and some Buckeyes ahead of Ohio State Michigan on Saturday at noon in the Horseshoe. Number one, Byers has been selling cars in some form or fashion to, uh, almost as long as Ohio State's been playing football. You didn't know that about our sponsor, did you? Uh, but then past that, uh, number one, Ronnie Hickman told us uh, just a little while ago this is going to be his last game in the shoe. Uh, he straightforward about it, didn't, didn't, mince, didn't mince anything, any mince words there. Uh, we didn't get a real handle on who's going to be the starting running back, how much Dallin Hayden's going to play. Uh, you got to you got to figure Dallin Hayden's going to get to play a lot in this game. Uh, Ryan Day um, kind of rolled with the punch there about being reminded of being uh, some people are born on third base and act like they hit a triple. He was reminded of that by me and uh, you know and opted not to even go there from the standpoint of hitting back. Of course, so did Jim Har Harbaugh to a certain extent, but Jim Harbaugh is the one that said it. Uh, yeah. I'm just curious, Tommy Eichenberg, uh, we understand, didn't make the, didn't become a finalist for the uh, Butkus Award, so I'm very interested in who did, you know, down the line, uh, finding that out. But uh, here's Tommy Eichenberg playing with two busted up hands and playing on a high level. That's what we're finding out. He is chomping at, champing at the bit to, bit to play this game, to get in there and hit somebody, so to speak. That just tells you the level a football player that's going to be going at each other on Saturday in the shoe. There's all kinds of ways I can go there, but those are a couple of the things that stood out to me. Andy? As for the Michigan side of things, no surprise here, but they're preparing as if Blake Corum's playing on Saturday, as they should. I mean, who knows what's going to happen with his injury there, but they talked about how difficult he is to defend. They also talked about J.J. McCarthy and what he can do with his legs. And Jim Knowles was, you know, admitting that, yeah, when you've got defensive ends like they have that are aggressive, that crash off the edge, it can be hard to contain the quarterback run. That's something they're working at, something they will have to get fixed for this weekend against Michigan and J.J. McCarthy. But yeah, Blake Corum is still something that's certainly on their minds. And you just got to prepare regardless of who's playing or who's not. My biggest takeaway from this is uh, I don't think I've heard Ryan Day as short and concise as he has been this week. Uh, I don't think I've heard that in a long time. I think I even said that last year, but this is even different from that. Um, Ryan Day did, wanted nothing to do with your question, Tim, about the third base thing. I don't think it's the, the place for it, but I'm glad you asked him so he could say that it's not the place for it yet. Um, and I say yet because I think that he might bring that up if Ohio State gets the job done on Saturday. Done on Saturday. Um, he was just very straightforward. This is the biggest challenge. This is what we have to do. We're locked in, we're focused, we're emotional, but we're disciplined. Um, he was very short, and you don't see that kind of Ryan Day very often. Um, I think he only had one smile in the entire press conference. Not something you see very often. So when I asked him about it, he had that Buckeye Leaf, did you win that, yeah. you win that Buckeye Leaf for him? I think so. Um, and then you heard the same from a guy who's usually very talkative, Cade Stover, had nothing really to offer other than how focused he is on this game and ready to go. It's a locked-in group, and I wouldn't expect anything less, yeah. but they understand the stakes. They understand exactly what this game is. They understand what it means and, and how they're going to have to be in order to walk out of the, the horseshoe on Saturday with a win over their arch rival. Ryan, Ryan Day was a lot like this the week of the Penn State game. He was pretty clipped, didn't say a whole lot. I mean, bottom line is preparation, preparation, preparation is the key in a game like this. Uh, he knows that, and also words don't win this game uh, either before or after. They may help you get better and uh, improve going into the next year, which clearly uh, Ohio State knew it wasn't good enough last year in the toughness area, or at least that's what people claim. We've been all over that, you know, from the standpoint of what makes you look tough, what doesn't. As I brought up with Ryan, though, this is a team that's won three games, gone into the fourth quarter with at least three games in jeopardy this year, and has figured out ways to win those games. And uh, that bodes well, I think, for this team, just like with Michigan going into that fourth quarter against Maryland, ironically, earlier in the year, and against Illinois last week, and figuring out a way by hook or crook to win that game when their number one weapon on offense was on the sideline, Blake Corum. But that's why, you know, you, you ask like uh, Jim Knowles, are you, are you preparing to see Blake Corum? Well, of course he is, because if he can play, he's going to play. Is he going to be 100%? You're not going to know that until about 3 o'clock or 3.30 on Saturday. But you got to prepare to take their best hit and then go from there. And uh, uh, that, that's what just stands out. This, this team has been focused on this moment 
or this renewal of this rivalry for 360, what, 361 days at this point, right? Yes. And uh, uh, and it's really, now it's here, and it's really interesting even for us sports writers to think about what we're going to see on Saturday, but really, we don't have a clue. Because just when you think a game's going to go this way, it goes that way. So, they, as a coach, as Ryan Day and Jim know, they have to have all these contingency thoughts in their brain, you know? Uh, yeah. And well, like Ohio State, who's going to start at running back? Who's going to be available? Is Mayan Williams going to be able to play? Is uh, Travion Henderson, is he going to be better than he was last week? Probably, you know, banged up. And Dallin Hayden, he's earned his spurs. You know, Dallin Hayden, in my opinion, might have earned the, the right to start in this game, you know, and then have that little bonus of one of those other two guys coming in. And That's my own thought. On the Michigan side, Andy's going to write about Blake Corum and, and the impact that he will have. I, I would be stunned if Blake Corum's not on the field on Saturday in some capacity. I was stunned. Uh, this is an all-hands-on-deck game. You know, Emeka Buka talked about he's been hurting almost all year, and the last few weeks especially, he's been out there. Uh, you know, I think any, anybody who is a game-time decision, as long as they can, can go, will go. And that's, that's just the nature of this rivalry. You're 11 games in. You're banged up. This is, this is week 12. Uh, of the marathon, and you know it's it's almost the last the last mile of the marathon. You've got to be able to finish. I would be surprised if a lot of these guys are not in uniform and playing for this game. Um, and I know you two feel the same way. Absolutely. I mean, this is what it's all for, right? This is the game you build up to, and in a certain way, this is when the season starts. It sounds silly to say that it's 11 games in. We're late November, but this is what they've been building towards, and all three of. The goals, the major goals for the season have been have been accomplished yet for Ohio State. So this is where it starts now. I think it's really interesting what Ryan Day talked about with the emotion because you're balancing, you want to lean into it a little bit. You want to internalize what was said. You want to feel like, okay, we need to take what happened last year and obviously fix things and get back on the right track. But you can't let it eat at you too much, especially on game day. So balancing that was also a big topic of discussion today in the press conference with Ryan Day. And with the players, it was a little bit different with Jim Knowles considering he wasn't here last year. And it was interesting to hear his perspective where he was kind of like, I knew the situation I came into, but I'm not, I didn't look at last year's game too much. I'm not focusing on that. We're not talking about that. So it is interesting considering the situations of some of the staff members. Like, it's very different for Jim Knowles than it is for Ryan Day. But there's yeah. pressure all around. Oh, sure. yeah. Well, but this is a guy who coached in Bedlam the last four years, the previous four years. That's a big time rivalry, you know? And uh, as he said, he coached in Cornell versus Penn, you know? I mean, but it is amazing as, as you were sitting there talking, Andy, I'm just thinking, you know, you almost feel sorry for some of these other rivalries, you know, especially when a, when a year comes up like this one, Ohio State versus Michigan, two versus three, 11 and 0 versus 11 and 0. Everything you train for, forget about revenge. Everything you train for is up for grabs. A, a shot in the Big Ten Championship game, a shot past that to get in the college football playoff. And and then, but you still got to treat it in preparation. There's only so, there's only so high you can rev up a football team before the day gets, shows up, you know? Yeah. And even then, you don't want an over rev situation because you want guys doing their responsibility, playing, playing their responsibility and getting after it and making plays. And uh, so that's, it's really weird when you look at it from the out, when you're on the outside looking in because you kind of can't wait till Saturday to get here. But the players and even the coaches know, man, today, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are so huge in the preparation aspect so that you don't go into Saturday and get snookered, uh, get surprised by something. And so we kind of like, sometimes, it, you know, when you ask a, a player a question like Tommy Eichenberg, you kind of want to hear more emotion in his voice. Well, that's a really, that's really begging, you know, but he, he's got to stick to the plan. He's got to, they, these guys have got to stick to the plan that's gotten them to this point, which is preparation, preparation, preparation. And uh, both physically and mentally, and that, that's what stands out to me about these, uh, because man, there have been some really good games in this series when it, when the national championship or something getting to play for it wasn't on the line. You understand? Now it's heightened, and every play on Saturday will make a big difference in that regard. And they, these guys all know it. I actually appreciated Tommy Eckenberg not a, not being very emotional today, but he was as honest as I've ever heard Tommy Eckenberg talking about how he didn't play well last year. He just flat out said it. I didn't play well last year. Why? I, I don't know. I just didn't. What, you know? Do, do you feel like you're going to play better this year? Yeah, I think so. So even a guy like that who's as emotionless with the media as anybody in this building, 
he, he kind of opened up a little bit without saying anything and said, I, I didn't play well enough last year. He understands the challenge ahead as well of trying to tackle Blake Corum. I asked him what makes Corum such, so hard to bring down. He said, Man, he's a good player. So, yeah. I mean, well, that's, that's the thing. I mean, we were, talking with, uh, we were talking with Steel Chambers last week about, you know, he used that word cloudy. When you come up for a play and stuff, and it wasn't real clear sometimes on who was doing what, or, or you know, and, and they this, this defense. I asked, you heard me ask Tommy that very thing, and he kind of like hedged on it because in his mind, you're out there on the field. It's your responsibility to make a play, no matter what, right? But that's not the way a good defense works. A good defense works in stopping all the gaps, having gap responsibility, taking care of gap integrity, taking care of your gap, and then, and then going to the scene of the crime. Because one of the big things that can bite them this week is gonna be Blake Corum, if he plays, uh, with that little bounce to the outside. Man, he has made big time play after big time play with that. Just ask Maryland. That was a difference in that game, a couple of those runs that he made. And it's very tough in a game like this with everything on the line for you on a defensive, an aggressive defense, to not go where you think the fire is, but stay in your fire station in case the fire comes to you. That's really difficult. It was even difficult for me to come up with that analogy on the fly, but I just did it. Bottom line is, that's what's gonna make the difference on Saturday against a guy like Blake Corum. Before we get out of here, fellas, uh, Andy, he just said that's what's gonna make the difference against Blake Corum. If there's one thing, now that you've heard this team speak about, that will make the difference in this game, what do you think it is right now on Tuesday as we stand here? Uh, one other thing I just want to say is that we didn't really talk about what Jim Harbaugh said yesterday, and I think it's really interesting listening to rhetoric of, between Jim Harbaugh and Ryan Day. Jim Harbaugh was, you know, just very, very conservative, not really saying anything. And Ryan Day didn't say anything too chippy either. But I will say that the words used by Jim Harbaugh were happy warriors. This yeah. is a group that, you know, we're, we're winning, we're happy. It was very, very stern for Ohio State today, the players, not in a mean way, but in a they have an edge kind of way. And I think that it's just really interesting to look at the way they're approaching it, the game from either side in Ann Arbor and then here in Columbus. The one thing that I take away, if, you know, this game, I think it's ultimately just going to be like, how can Ohio State maximize its strengths? We talked so much about the toughness, but like at the end of the day, how much can they lean on their passing game and CJ Stroud when it matters most? CJ yeah. Stroud has been a great quarterback this year. He's a Heisman Trophy candidate for a reason, but last few weeks he hasn't been at his best. Can he be at his best against Michigan when it matters most? And that's honestly, I think, what's going to determine the game. Board back there, fellas, says beat TUN. Uh, it's that time. Uh, about to get out of here. Maybe go enjoy some Thanksgiving feast here in the coming days. Well, you know what says TUN? Because that stands for Team Up North. It used to be TTUN, the Team Up North. But of course, there's only one the team, as Ohio State has got that marketed. I guess you're right, Tim. I didn't think of it that way. It's the game. You got me. The Ohio State and Team Up North. You got me stumped a little <laughs> bit. Uh, we're going to get out of here on that note. That's the 40 year bet, Tim May. That's Andy Backstrom. I'm Spencer Holbrook. Full coverage of Ohio State and Michigan. LettermanRoad.com. $10 for, an, for nearly an entire year until next August. Wow. Uh, give the gift of Letterman Road this holiday season. It's the best thing you can do to any loved one, I think. Maybe a little biased. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. $10 is a pretty that good gift. It might be a little over the top, but it is a hell of a bargain. Let me put it that way. How about a great stocking stuffer? A $10 gift? The gift of Letterman Row. Sounds great to me, fellas. Uh, again, Tim, Andy, Spencer, Matt behind the camera. Thanks as always, Matt. We appreciate your hard work. Uh, we're going to get out of here and get on to Thanksgiving. Bold predictions on the way on Friday, and then it is time. Ohio State, Michigan, noon in the Horseshoe on Saturday. Thanks for watching the latest practice report presented by Byers Auto. We will see you back in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center for bold predictions for the game on Friday.